Yes. Ik ben Rebecca. En ik ben Florian. En wij gaan jullie meenemen op tour. Ja, door de gebouwen van de FHK. Let's go. Naast muziek, theater, beeldend is er natuurlijk hier op de FHK ook een dance academy. En dat gebeurt vooral hier in de dansstudio's. En hier is ook een les bezig. En volgens mij staat Rebecca beneden om even een kijkje te nemen. En uh, als je de sfeer hier zou moeten omschrijven, hoe zou je dat dan doen? Ja, heel veel diversiteit en dat zorgt wel voor gewoon een, of in ieder geval bij ons een energieke sfeer. Dat is wel heel tof. Je hebt mensen van alle landen en natuurlijk praat je ook Engels, terwijl Nederlands je moedertaal is, dat is wat je gewend bent. Dus niet per se echt zo een echt hier docent en je leerlingen. Het is wel van, ze staan er wel voor je, ze staan voor je klaar, dus dat is wel echt super chill. Hier op de FHK zitten wel 15 opleidingen onder één dak. En dat is hier in deze gang eigenlijk perfect merkbaar. Flashback. En achter deze deur zit de master architectuur en stedenbouw. En volgens mij kunnen we even naar binnen, maar we moeten wel heel stil zijn, want ze zijn heel serieus bezig. Alle masteropleidingen werken hier op de FHK met elkaar samen tijdens onder andere de onderzoeksdag. Ja, en je hebt bijvoorbeeld de Master of Music. Uh, performing Public Space. Kunsteducatie. En choreografie. We zijn hier in het Academie Theater. En we gaan even kijken naar een flashback. Hier op de FHK zijn maar liefst zes werkplaatsen. Een werkplaats voor textiel. Digitaal. Hout. Grafiek. Metaal. En keramiek. We lopen nu door de gang, door de kelder van Rock Academie. Waarom ben jij naar de FHK gekomen? Ja, vooral de vibe, de sfeer, het past meer bij mij, of het past het meest bij mij. Dus, ja. Ik kom alleen maar creatieve dingen tegen, mensen willen dingen delen, mensen willen dingen zien. Dus ja, het is gewoon één grote creatieve sfeer en dat is super chill. Eigenlijk... Leuk, en wat ben je aan het doen? Ik was momenteel een beetje aan het schrijven en ik heb het eigenlijk net afgerond, dus ik was het eigenlijk aan het oefenen. Ja, daar wil ik zo zaken voor een young boy. Blijf bijvoorbeeld weken in de convoy. Wil je focussen op het feit dat ik me ontplooi. Vandaar dat ik mijn zonnes in het rond strooi. Hoi. Hoi. We zijn hier in de digitale werkplaats. Volgens mij is het tijd voor een flashback. En in dit lokaal zijn de mensen van de Academie voor Muziek en Musical Theater bezig. Maar. Um... Mogen we gewoon naar binnen? Denk het wel. Kom. Hij zit een beetje met een 40 euro aan mij toch? Dat is het. Dat is echt niet waar. Is het. Ik wil van haar de context weten. Zo, Rebecca, waar moeten we nu naartoe? Uh, nou, we hebben hier bijna alles gehad. Dus okay. ik denk uh, naar de circushal. Die hebben we nog niet gezien. De Academy of Circus and Performance Arts. Oké, okay, yes. dat moet op de fiets toch? Uh, ja, laten we de fiets in. Ja, oké. Okay. Als er nu één opleiding internationaal is op de FHK, dan is het wel deze opleiding. We zijn namelijk bij de Academy for Circus and Performance Arts. Dat was het weer. En wil jij nou ook op Fontes komen studeren of wil je meer informatie? Ga dan naar fontes.nl slash kunsten. Of volg de FHK op Twitter, Instagram of Facebook. Yes. En dan uh, hopelijk zien we jullie volgend jaar op de FHK. Tot ziens. Hallo iedereen en welkom to this online webinar of Fontes School of Fine and Performing Arts.
Hello everybody, welcome to the online webinar of uh, the Academy of Music and Performing Arts. Uh, I am Rebecca. Yes, and my name is Florian and through the next hour we will going to talk about the program. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about some general information. We're going to talk about the curriculum, the auditions, the working field and the atmosphere here at the school. Um, yes. Yeah. And uh, if you have questions uh, during uh, all this talking, <laughs> you can just ask them in the chat and we will answer them uh, live. And we are not going to uh, talk uh, alone. We no. have some guests here. <laughs> uh, can you maybe introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Well, my name is Martijn Smits and I'm the head of studies of this, uh, this program. I'm also a musician, a classical organ player and a conductor. So it's, uh, it's my profession. And we also have some students. Welcome. Hello, uh, I'm Glenn. I'm a second year bachelor classical violin. I study with Jolente. Hello, I'm Maria. I come from Portugal. Um, this is my last year of bachelor and I play sa classical saxophone. OK, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Um, maybe, Glenn, I'm going to start with you. Can you tell us what's so unique about this program here uh, at Fontis? Uh, I think it's very different from other conservatories. Uh, because you can really make your own way and it's not the, the ordinary classical, you just do classical music and that's it. No, you can do everything like interdisciplinarity, projects, uh, contemporary music, uh, and I really like that thing about this academy. Is it the same for you, Maria? For why did you choose for Fontis? Um, I chose for my main teacher, uh, Thies, uh, but actually the interdisciplinarity projects um, have helped me a lot with uh, widening my uh, approach to the saxophone. So um, it's a really way to a good way to uh, develop yourself. Yeah, nice. And uh, Martin, why did you <laughs> did you choose for Fontis? <laughs> or what's the 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 nice thing that you like to work with students here at the academy? Well, I really like the fact that we have students from all different countries, uh, actually all over the world, um, helping them finding their own way, becoming a music musician, but also a music artist. So really uh, somebody, a musician who discovers what it is to be on stage, to be performing, to be working together with other disciplines. And I think that's really an interesting, uh, an interesting yeah, course we can offer for them. So discovering their own trajectories, discovering their own talents, and then, um, yeah, the fact that we kind of adjust the program to their talents, to their wishes, and uh, help them guiding uh, through this uh, through this educational course towards a profession, of course, yeah. towards work in the real professional field. Yeah. And what kind of musicians do you uh, yeah, want to develop uh, or educate here? Well, at, first of all, there is nothing wrong with the, let's say, the classical or the jazz musician on stage playing a concert in a traditional way. That's, that's very beautiful and it's very necessary for society. But I think we have a lot more to offer as musicians in a more theatrical way, in a more innovative, interdisciplinary way. And so I would like to explore, first of all, the talents being a very good traditional musician on stage, feeling comfortable there with a good mindset being on stage, uh, you know, feeling nice and, and not awkward to be there, but really standing there with pleasure and fun and then discovering that there is a lot of other stuff to do in relation to the space you are in, in relation to the audience you have in front of you. So it's very interesting to see students explore their yeah, theatrical, physical behavior on stage and finding all kinds of new ways to express themselves on, on this uh, stage through music, because yeah. that's of course the main, yeah, the main thing they come for. Yeah, because it's also changing. The, 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 also, the working field is changing. The world is changing. Definitely. Because the traditional violin player on the stage is not. It's not the only profile you have. Well, I think indeed that if you would only educate for uh, for this, let's say, the more traditional field, yeah, that's that's possible, and it still will be there for probably the rest of our future. But yeah, I think uh, to connect or to even to innovate this uh, this more traditional field towards new strands and new horizons, I think that's actually not only a task, it's, it's almost a, a duty, uh, an, ob an obligation towards yeah, yeah. our students uh, that, that they can really connect to that, yeah, to, that to, the, to, to the field within five years or within 10 years, instead of just only connecting to an existing field, which is there now. That's, uh, yeah. uh, is it also the way you look at the working field, Glenn, to like, uh, yeah, not, not, get, not being the traditional player, or the musician? 
Yeah, I really see around me uh, that classical music is it is not dying, but there's less and less public <laughs> for it. <laughs> and I think that the new ways of giving concerts and bring music to people, uh, can, you can really learn them here, like interdisciplinarity with theater and stuff. It, it comes more to people and they maybe appreciate it more or are more interested. So I think it's really important <laughs> yeah. to, to learn it. And Maria, in what, what kind of ways, because you're a fourth year, yes. last four years you, you had the opportunity to yeah, discover that kind of new ways of being a, a musician? Yes. Um, so for me, for instance, the project I did, uh, Alaf, it was with the classical and jazz department and also with the theater. Um, for me, it was nice because I did, all, did not only have to play, but I had to perform also. Um, it helped me to have another perspective of how projects go and also how to be on stage. And it helped me also to be uh, more confident when I'm now playing alone also as well. So it helps you in very different areas as well. Okay. Yeah, we well, we have a there is really a really beautiful yeah, uh, question. I, want, I already uh, wanted to ask that question. So, uh, <laughs> no. Um, the question is, uh, Maria and Glenn, uh, what is your dream? Where you, where do you want to be in ten years? Well, dream big, it. dream big. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, at least, um, I'm not thinking about going back to Portugal. I would like to stay here or in Belgium. Uh, so here around and uh, I would like to be a solo performer or have my own ensemble and also give lessons and uh, be able to also uh, have interdisciplinarity within it. So really uh, uh, take with me what I've learned here at school. It's a nice, nice, nice dream. And Glenn? I'm still finding out because I'm just a second year, um, but I'm thinking about in a classical orchestra or the Metropole Orchestra or something. Um, and chamber music is something I really like, but I also want to look other genres. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so not only classical, but different styles, yeah. but I'm not sure what about them. So. And this is also the, the dream that uh, you already had when you came in here or uh, so before auditioning, did you also had a dream and is it similar? No, I think. Yeah, it was for me more or less the same, but no, chamber music got more uh, importance in within it. So, yeah, to really take a risk on it and make music with others, because I think it's a really nice experience, yeah. unique. Do you think it's important, Martin, that, that students have, the, have a dream during the study, during the program? I think that's the only reason why they come here, that they come with a certain vibe, a certain, let's say, yeah, a dream or sparkle within them. And that sparkle, most, but with most of them, they already existed when they were like 10 years old or something. And they experienced music in such an impactful way that it, uh, yeah, that there the dream uh, yeah, was, was starting. And then they come in here and of course it's our task and duty to discover the dream with them and to arrange everything around that and make it more realistic because yeah. a dream can be like wide and broad and and yeah of course we have a task to make it more realistic for them and that's what we do with for instance courses on entrepreneurship so we offer them like a four-year trajectory in, in entrepreneurial thinking and then you don't have to only think about making your own company but also finding out who you really are so finding your identity and combining PR, but also combining like um, uh, projects you want to organize or groups you want to develop, uh, combining that with your own identity. So yeah. actually what Glenn was mentioning, like I'm not sure yet, but I'm still discovering. So it can be open. Yes, exactly. You don't have to come in and say, I want to be there in four years. It also can be, uh, actually, can it be different plans. It changes a lot with students. Well, with, with yeah. Maria, uh, it, it also changed, of course, uh, as far as the content is concerned. So, for instance, uh, you mentioned it changed with regard to the chamber music and indeed also your chamber music activities changed a bit, uh, like in the content, the, the pieces that you are going to play and the interest you have. And that's, of course, what we together develop with our team of mentors and with the teachers. 
So um, yeah, I think it's very important that they have a dream and that's, yeah, I think you can't dream big enough. So, and then we see what we can do for it. Yeah. Uh, so where do the students that graduate end up? Where do they go? Where do they yeah, work? There's, yeah, that's a very important question. And indeed now in Corona times, it's a specific question we have to address every day, every week uh, and, and renew it. Yeah. Uh, so the, the field where they come is very broad. So few, a lot of them choose for a combination of different activities. Um, as you already heard, uh, education is a very important task. So if you want to develop yourself in a more educative uh, uh, field, then you have all kinds of opportunities here in our own academy. But also if you want to study uh, after our academy here, you can study at the Academy of Music Education or a master in art education. So there is a lot of possibilities here to develop that strand. Mm -hmm. As you can also hear, they come from making and playing music. So you see a lot of creative uh, uh, fields where they come in, in theatre, in festivals, in uh, in chamber music concert series, in uh, in um, schools, in uh, in yeah, let's say areas in in certain cities where they have to develop certain social projects. So you see a lot of different uh, contexts in yeah. which they can explore their creative uh, practices and also playing. Yeah. Yeah, and are there, are there also internships uh, where you also, uh, already mix with the professional field? Or? Yeah, that starts in year one already uh, okay. and we try to, to let them play, let's say, in, in all kinds of different theatres in, in the neighbourhood. So mm -hmm. here in Tilburg they play in, in a lot of different venues. The Jazz Academy plays in a, in a very beautiful jazz uh, venue called Paradox, but we connect to the link in the contemporary music uh, um, uh, uh, society, but also with the Nieuwe Vost where you have a more theatrical uh, yeah. classical music and jazz music uh, scene. Uh, and then we have the venues around us eh? in, in Den Bosch, a beautiful concert series in Willem II, the Toonzaal, and in Eindhoven in the music, in the, in the, in the, the bigger music uh, hall there. But also in Roosendaal Theater, the Kring is a very interdisciplinary uh, performance uh, trajectory. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have a lot of places where they can really. Also outside of Brabant and outside yes, of, of the Netherlands. To make it more practical and really educated, because we, we want to be in near contact with these venues that they also coach our students. So not only go there and play and do your thing, no, really uh, get feedback from them and then it's more easy to have, of course, partners around you. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we play in Amsterdam in the concert hall in the Musiktheatergebouw, the big venue there with Opera Forward Festival. And yeah, we have a lot of different activities indeed. So. Yeah. And uh, Glenna Maria, can you tell something about your internships and did you choose them yourself or were they chosen for you? Um, there was one I did with a uh, quartet I had. Um, basically, the school offers uh, sort of auditions for uh, the the different halls we have here in the Netherlands, and I applied with my quartet, and we had the opportunity to play in uh, in Willem, no, in Rosendal, I think. And um, and you also can apply as well as soloists for uh, the Willem II and uh, for other uh, rooms here in the Netherlands. Yes. I haven't them yet because I'm second year and so one year of Corona now. <laughs> yeah. so only one half year of real studying, so no concerts for me yet. One project, an interdisciplinarity project, a little bit, uh, with contemporary music projects, I'm sorry. And we played in the hall here in Tilburg, Concertzaal, and in Eindhoven. Okay, and where, if you, if you can choose, where do you want to do your internship? I don't know yet. <laughs> Actually, well, it's just. Sorry, with which genre would it be? I would maybe? like in with the chamber music group, uh, yeah. in different halls. Yeah, hopefully, it yeah. can be. Uh, it's, hopefully, it's soon. possible <laughs> in a few, uh, in a few uh, months, weeks. I don't know. <laughs> well, we especially do the auditions uh, because we think it's important for students to get used to these kind of things because it's normal in, in, in auditions the, for the internship. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So if you um, yeah, if you get used to to perform for an uh, for a jury, which uh, is as of course, yeah, different types of jury members who have different things they they uh, they, they pay attention to. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 good to learn to do that. So with your ensemble or solo, it's kind of uh, yeah. It's, it's always intensive and, and a bit stressful, but yeah, you have to learn to deal with your nerves then. And uh, yeah, that's very interesting to see yeah. what happens there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's also a question. Uh, sounds like uh, you get a lot of feedback uh, from the teachers. Uh, how is uh, the contact with the teachers? Is how is, uh, yeah. Very good. <laughs> yes, I agree. Well, I really have good contact with the teachers. You can just 
talk to them, just not only about the classes. Just talk but to them. <laughs> well, <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah, about the subject, but also just just talk, just have conversations, and uh, they really help you with things, and they're really open, and it's not hard to reach them or something. It's also, easy. maybe because they are struggling, like with mental or like uh, when you have yeah. like like uh, how do you say it. Um, Not only practical things, yeah. but like like also mental like, issues. yeah, mental issues or yeah. all kind of mentor and mental issues sounds <laughs> yeah. a little bit yeah, uh, they really can help. Stuff, eh? Yeah, yeah personal stuff. stuff you can discuss with your <laughs> yeah, teachers. For that, for those things, you also have a mentor, and they're really helpful for me at least. So, do they feel more like coaches or like really like teachers? The teachers feel like teachers, but <laughs> the coaches. <laughs> feel so like that's coaches. yeah. But there are so there are coaches and teachers. Yes. yes. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. And what, what what's the difference then? Of what what's the difference be between them and for what uh, subjects you get coaches and what subject teacher? I think you divide the coaching by uh, instruments, if I'm not mistaken. And my coach is a um, theory teacher. And the difference is that I don't see him anymore because I don't have theory anymore. But uh, sometimes he sends me an email just to check on how I'm doing with my course. Okay. Um, so basically that's it. And also if I need something, I just text him, I make an appointment and it's solved. It's really fast. That's nice. We call this a sort of a mentoring system. We have eight mentors in our school and those mentors are of course also teachers. But with regard to mentoring, we try to, yeah, to give them a let's say 12 students to coach and they are really responsible for yeah, the checking how the progress in the study goes, how the mental health of the students is, um, helping them out with certain issues. So it's uh, besides that teachers do that as well. So the instrument teachers, as you already heard, they are really helpful and have a personal relation with students. We also have this more, let's say, mentoring system that is um, yeah, helping them out in, in, in all kinds of issues. So it's, I think in, in, in nowadays it's kind of important to organize a good system around the students and not only a one-to-one -one teacher uh, a student relationship, but the whole team of teachers and management, as, as far as I'm concerned, that we all know about the students together. Yeah. So we feel responsible as a team for the students and not only one student and one teacher feel responsible yeah. for their course or for their relationship. Yeah. So. Also because the question was about the feedback, there was a lot of feedback moments and you, you got a lot of time that you get feedback. Well, sometimes I also ask myself like, uh, to him like, um, how am I doing at the point? What do you think I should focus more for now as a short term uh, for a long term view? Okay. Um, so we can also take our own initiative to ask how we are going with the studies. But it's quite open in general. It's really nice. Do you have the same experience? Ken? Yes, you really uh, feel that you're not just a number at school here. They really care about you. So you can always just ask for a conversation and really interested in how are you and what can we do to make it better for you. Uh, also in Corona times, um, teachers have little appointments personal to just ask if everything is okay and not just online classes and that's it. They're really interested in in you. No, oh, seems looks nice. There is another question in the chat. Can you describe a normal week for a normal week for you? Classes, practicing, working, studying at home. So yeah. maybe by normal, normal they mean <laughs> pre-corona? Uh, yeah. yeah. So how, how does my week look like at the academy? In first year, you have three mornings of music theory, uh, like analysis uh, and one day of... Um, yeah, training. <laughs> Sorry? Air training, solfege. Yeah, air training, thank you, <laughs> dictations. <laughs> and uh, solfege with singing, um, you learn that in the morning. And then you have music history, uh, two hours a week, and interdisciplinarity. Um, cultural theory as well. Cultural well. theory as well, indeed. And the rest of the time you have uh, time to practice in the study rooms here at school and rehearse together with your uh, ensemble and in the night normally you do something together. <laughs> uh, well, I think. So there's also a lot of time for studying for at yourself, uh, like yes. studying alone or in a group? There's a lot of time for it. You mm -hmm. can really make your own schedule. Okay. 
Um, maybe Martin, you have a, a idea for this, a slide for the. Uh, yeah, but but I, I can just talk talk about it. In the mornings, indeed, what they mention are we have the more reflective and theoretical courses. We hope that they are still a bit uh, awake then. <laughs> That's a bit the reason why we do that in the morning, because uh, reason, if you have a theory class at 4 a.m. in the afternoon or 4 p.m. in the afternoon, everybody gets tired. Yeah. Uh, but uh, playing and having your instrumental lessons and your ensemble lessons all on the afternoons and the evenings, also the group lessons and the concerts, of course. Um, and in between, they they manage to, uh, to to do the rehearsals themselves on with ensembles and the individual uh, uh, on the individual instruments. And I'm curious, Maria, how many hours do you study a day? So normally, what's uh, what's a bit? Sixteen? No. Uh, <laughs> <a> day? <laughs> no, between two and three. I take it now. I'm taking it very easily because I'm just coming back from vacation. <laughs> and the yeah, first year, and first year, how many hours did you study your instrument? I think it was also two to three, more or less, maybe even less, I think. Yeah, there is a main difference between uh, the, the wind instrumentalist, the violinist, the singer. Singers cannot study like six hours a day, then your voice. No, yeah. And also like uh, wind instruments have the same problem. You see with keyboards, with piano and organ that they study more or less like four or five hours a day, that, that differs a bit. So it's uh, yeah. I always advise that, that more than four hours is not, then you don't study well. You have to have a new study uh, uh, routine because yeah, if you need more than four hours a day, then maybe you have to, to adjust a bit the way you study. That's uh, yeah. yeah, because F is every day, yeah? so also in the weekends and also, so you, you need to have some relaxed time as well. That's uh, for sure. You have a slide about the curriculum, I think. Yes. Maybe you can talk us through um, effects. Yeah, well, as you can see uh, here, um, and, and Glenn already explained a bit, in the mornings we have the theory and the interdisciplinarity courses and, uh, and cultural theory lessons. Um, and I think it, it works quite well like this because students have the same routine every week, can go to class really at nine o'clock, are awake, uh, coming out of the bed soon. It's, it's just like helping them to build a routine in that practicing music is not like sleeping till 12 o'clock, but it's really by working hard. Playing music is uh, <laughs> it's the opposite. Yeah, so you have to do something about it, also reflecting. And uh, so we, we think it's very important to also reflect on what you do. So that's why cultural theory and music history is, uh, is also a very important course. Yeah? So cultural theory, for instance, is really about reflecting on, on the ethics of music, for instance, or on the philosophical part of music yeah. or the social part of music. It's not so obvious, but we, we want to learn students to think about that. That's, uh, so you also have a lot of theoretical... Pro uh, yeah, so you have to write something, you have to read sometimes, you have to listen to courses, you have to do something. It's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, you really, it's really useful for your future practice uh, when you have to write like a proposal for something or like to write for funding or you have to motivate and to be clear in your mind to write down what you want. And this, this was, in these courses, you have the exercise actually for that. Yeah. And you were talking about reflecting about your own profession. I think that's really interesting. I think like you have a lesson where you learn how to play the piano, to say it <laughs> a little bit strange maybe. But in which kind of courses you get to reflect at yourself? What what am I doing? What am I learning? Uh, how did you? Uh, yeah. Exp I think we mostly use it on the final assessment uh, because we have a task where we have to write uh, how it was it for us. What did you f we feel? What is our plan for the next uh, one year and five years? I think. And we need to really uh, think about what we have felt. So. It's for us to reflect and for us to help also the school to understand us. Was it a good thing? Was it, did it help you? Was, was it a yes, yes. It, I'm really like in five years. Um, well, <laughs> and then I have to over think a little bit more like, what do I want to concretely, even though maybe it will not happen, but I have a concrete idea at least. Is it the same for you, Glenn? Yes, normally in a day you don't really think about what you want to do in five or ten years. But you have to think about it because there is a future coming. Um, and I really think it helps. And after the, the thing you write, you have a conversation with your teacher and another teacher. Um, and you're going to talk about it and you come from new new things to do. Yeah. Martin was talking, I think it's also really interesting that he was talking about the personality, the performativity of the music, the musician. It's not, it's not only the player behind this piano, but it's also a person. Uh, uh, yeah. How did you 
experienced that the last four years of how in which way you could develop that kind of um, yeah, yes. feeling? For me, I had a subject that was communication and it was really um, inspiring to let us understand how we can uh, behave on stage, how we can be present, how we can enhance this kind of um, yeah, this kind of aspects and um, the, the the theater also helped me a lot. And now, for instance, I don't have any interdisciplinarity because I finished already, so I'm doing it myself with the uh, ensemble and I feel uh, what I feel from it is I feel more confident. I used to feel really stressed before going to lessons and now I don't feel it anymore. And also when I go to stage, when I go to do a student concert or uh, something like that, I I feel that I have more control of what I'm doing and I'm more aware of, aware of everything. Yeah. So it's That's really a nice, nice development. Yeah. And for you, Glenn, is it, do you think it's important to not only learn to play the violin, but also be in artists to perform to be a performer yes, it's really important you can uh, go on stage and play play your piece but i don't think you make contact with the audience that way you really have to show something of yourself um and really try to give it to the audience because otherwise it's just like okay she played something okay well yeah. <laughs> it doesn't give really a a good well it's not good i think no, no, it's interesting. It's interesting yeah, how a you. a nice yeah. example of one of my saxophone teachers. He was playing a concert, a solo concert, and he plays and plays very beautiful for himself, but there was no response from the audience. So he tried better and played even better and more beautiful, still no response. So he decided to put his baritone sax on the on the floor and tell told a joke to the <laughs> to the audience, and everybody was laughing. And then afterwards, he could just play and have a lot of interaction with the audience. And <laughs> so this theatrical act of just putting down your saxophone, telling a small joke just to trigger something in the audience because yeah, you can play even more beautiful and do more your best, but it doesn't work. So you need to think sometimes about what is my relation with, and that's what we try to learn the students, not to tell a joke, but try to yeah, yeah, yeah. So you learn a lot of jokes. Too. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of jokes. You can always yeah. tell a joke and then... <laughs> no, but uh, and what, what is really important is, is uh, maybe to connect a bit to this topic is finding your identity as a musician is only possible when you have a lot of free space in your curriculum to develop that personal side. So already from year two onwards, we have a lot of choices for students. So you saw the curriculum of year one now on screen a few minutes ago, but if you would see year two, three and four, you see an increasing amount of free space where students can design their own trajectory according to their own wishes. So in year two, they have some electives they can choose from. So eight different electives on entrepreneurship or on conducting or teaching, and they can decide which elective suits them at that moment the best. And in year three, they have like half of the program, 30 ECs free just to fill in with their own wishes, with their own um, yeah, search for what, what suits their identity the best. Free choices. Uh, the free yeah. choice, the free space, as it is called indeed. You can do anything. Do, yes, you can go outside with yeah. teachers from other schools. You can do courses in, and master classes in, 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 in foreign countries. You can also decide to, as, as a classical saxophonist, to choose jazz saxophone or as a rock academy student, they come for jazz drums or mm -hmm. it's very interesting to see this. And then, of course, in year four in our curriculum, we can continue this. So we have even an, uh, another 30 EC in an interdisciplinarity project and in electives for them to choose the uh, yeah and to, to, de to design their own trajectory. And that's, I think, connected to finding your identity. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't deliver 150 the same students at the end of for year four. It's it's very boring. Eh? Yeah, we, the field involved, doesn't yeah. need uh, the same 10 same violinists. I mean, we need identities, unique persons, and that's yeah. what we strive for. I also have a question for uh, Glenn and Maria. Do you have time for a job next to uh, the program? I have a job, but I don't work. I only work on Sundays because school is closed on Sundays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and sometimes another week in the horeca. Horeca. No. English? No. Restoration? Yes, in, 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 yeah, <laughs> in a cafe. <laughs> uh, yes, so one day a week. Um, and now because of Corona, I have one day rest. That's also nice. But it, it's possible, but not too much, I think. And and, and what, what did you do for your free choice? I'm also interested in. in, in I haven't done it yet. Honestly, sorry, yeah. You, and yeah, you? I did. Uh, I chose, I divided it in three parts. I did photography. Uh, I did, I'm doing still classical singing because of Corona and I'm doing extra chamber music with the trio and also with the interdisciplinarity. And is it all here uh, 
on school or did you? Oh, at school, yes. Okay. And do you have time for a job? <laughs> I work one time per week also <laughs> only. <laughs> and there's also there is a, a, an impresario inside school, right? Uh, yes. Do you also play for that sometimes because do you know more more about this? Or? Indeed once, um, but I, I don't know how it works exactly because they call uh, it was a, a someone that already exists and I had to just go in. Uh, but I think you just have to send your uh, sort of small portfolio, your info. Um, yeah, sort of a press kit, uh, so uh, a video if you can, uh, audio, photography, and uh, then they expose you on a website and then someone might uh, choose you for for playing uh, or circus, for instance, is also in the Impresario. Uh, you also get paid, right? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah that sounds really, really nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's very <laughs> interesting indeed. Ah, yeah. oh. And also, F, for instance, Maria mentions uh, this, this photography interest. Yeah, that's very beautiful because already in your first year you showed in your portfolio that you were interested in in photography and then in your third year you choose to to enlarge and, and deepen and enrich your your knowledge about photography and now we ask you to help us out with photo, taking photos for our own pr kit of our education so she so earned some money with photographing for our uh, organ yeah. department and smart, and, smart. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is the way it works eh? so uh, also your other talents are very important for a musician to just develop them alongside and you can combine those things. Yeah? I mean, uh, yeah, she has a real beautiful eye for for photography, musical instruments. And you if you are not a musician, you don't see it. So you need to be a musician to be really aware of what you can, what is oh, interesting yeah, in, uh, in in taking pictures of, uh, of of instruments. So I think it's, it's a real good talent that, that she developed. Yeah. Thank you. We have a question in the chat. Uh, how are ensembles organized? Do students have to do that themselves? Uh, you get we talked a, a lot about ensembles you're in and chamber music. Yeah, well, so they, they make an, an indailing uh, uh, yeah, schedule, schedule, schedule yeah. sort of, uh, with people, with a coach, um, and then you can contact each other and start. But you can also just try some something new with people you choose yourself. So you have to do it yourself? It, it well, it's already given, but you can always do extra with, okay. with yourself. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. And I, I'm curious um, because the people at home, uh, they have to go uh, audition uh, later in the year or maybe the auditions already started, I think. No? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did your audition go? Do you remember? Yes, I did. Um, <laughs> I was really nervous because I'm really nervous for audition when there's a jury. I'm not nervous on stage, but for an audition, I am. Um, and it was in a small room, um, just not a stage, but a really room with the jury and all lights. And <laughs> I was really scared <laughs> and I played not very well <laughs> for my feeling at least. Um, but they just try to relax you and it's not too important to play perfectly all the notes, but you have to bring something with music um, and they really gave me the the peace and the, the, the freedom to to give that so that was it was okay in the end <laughs> you're here so yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. for you maria i had the same environment something cozy small with three teachers i i think and uh they, we are also given a pianist to accompany accompany us um and like she said, uh, we are made to feel cozy and uh, uh, welcomed for our uh, performance. So you shouldn't be scared. <laughs> no one is going to bite you. <laughs> it's OK. No, how, how did you prepare for the audition? What did you do at home? Uh, what do you have to learn before you go? Know your piece well. Yes, <laughs> play it for as many different people as possible so that you are oh, prepared yeah. to perform it at, if possible, any circumstance or with any kind of pressure for friends, family, other teachers that you don't know from your previous school. Anything you can do is welcome and will help you. Yeah, this may be good to for also for the for the viewers at home uh, who are watching this uh, this presentation to know that. Um, yeah, what is really, how can you prepare yourself well? What is really good to, to be audition proof as we, we have certain questions on screen now and we also want to advise the students a bit that of course it's, it's very important to, to play beautiful, 
but it's not important to play the most complex repertoire beautiful. It's good to play a ah, repertoire that you are comfortable in and that maybe is 80% of what you can really do. So because when you have stress and you have to do an audition, maybe 20% of what you really can do is, is, is away. So maybe choose a piece that is that is more comfortable for you and you can play it yeah, more beautiful than, than more complex repertoire. So that's really one of the advices uh, we, we give them. But also, for instance, uh, a warming up. It's very important, not only if you do a sports game, if you want to run or you want to cycle, no, also for an audition, it's good mm -hmm. to just go into a study cell, prepare yourself easily. Um, don't play all the pieces you are going to play within in <laughs> within half an hour, and but just play long notes, breathe, uh, uh, and think about the complex passages a bit, and that's that's for sure a good preparation. So if you are like in a hurry and you have to rush to the room and then get your instrument, yeah, that's of course not not really. So take your time, be on time. We have enough study cells to 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 give you uh, the opportunity to prepare. Also a mental warming up. Definitely, because it's not only physical. It's really like it. getting in a sort of a mental state. Definitely, yeah. And yeah, how can you convince the jury? Glenn mentioned it already. You don't play the notes, play the music. That's for sure. And Beautiful. if you make mistakes in playing the music, I don't care. If you make mistakes in when you only play the notes, then it gets really boring. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So make music, put, put your soul in it, and show it. Yeah. And how many people uh, audition? Well, quite a lot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so we have like 300 auditions for 30, 40 spots a year. So it's, yeah, it's, um, it depends a bit on your instrument. Uh, so uh, how yeah. many get selected? Well, for instance, if for classical voice, we have eight spots in our uh, in our class and yeah, uh, more over 25 auditions. So yeah, we can select uh, yeah. for saxophone. It's a bit uh, like we have five to eight spots. So it's yeah, it's also the same a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so be on time, uh, prepared <laughs> well. And, <laughs> be on time. So yeah, sorry, exactly. Time. So don't don't wait anymore. And, there is a practical question. Uh, how are the auditions organized during Corona? So how, yeah. Yeah. So all the Dutch students and the Belgium students, they can come for a live audition. So we okay. really invite you to come to our school, come and, and play live. For foreign students, uh, you can send in a video uh, with some repertoire. All the, the, the repertoire that you can play is on our website. So you can just check what the level is with regard to the repertoire you have to show. Send us the video and we will judge it with our jury. If we would have really some doubts, but we see something in you, then we ask you still to come. But okay. yeah, if you come from China or from far away in, in South America, it becomes more difficult. But uh, when you are in Europe, maybe we will uh, we will ask you and we will give you a chance to convince us in a live setting. Um, and the theory is the same. So for the Dutch and the Belgium students, you can just come and we do a theory test in the school. For the other students, you can just have a theory test online and we have every uh, service for that. Uh, so most of the time you already directly know whether you can, whether you are uh, in or not. So we have yeah. a very sh uh, short term communication. Yeah, so it's one round. Yeah. OK. Well, for the singers, we have a, a, another drama uh, theater round, but for the for the instrumentalists, is uh, yeah, you just play, do the theory. If both is okay, we have you on a on a list that you are allowed to study here. And yeah, if we see that, for instance, um, we have already like twelve singers who can come, and we have only eight spots, then we have to choose. So then we are on a wait list, as it is called, waiting. Why do only the singers have to do with the theater uh, um, round? Well, yeah, so for, for the singers, we um, we developed a new curriculum. Uh, yeah. So the Musique Theater Classique course and the AMPA vocal course are combined now together in a really Musique Theater vocal course. So drama and theater is also a main discipline in our course. We uh, yeah we, we we discovered together with music theater that it is very important for students to do that. So not only AMPA um, uh, offers the vocal classes, but uh, and drama as a side course. Now it's also the main dish. So it's really uh, studying uh, actor training, studying theatrical improvisation, studying song acting. Uh, so how how good have you? Uh, do you have to be at that? Do you have to? Well, you have to have at least show some experience uh, and. Uh, and that's why there is a second round. The, the drama teachers will have an, uh, an uh, real life, um, uh, let's sort of from practical training with you yeah. on that day, on the day, and then they see whether you are educatable so that yeah. you can develop yourself on a short term. That's okay. 
Okay. Uh, also a question for uh, you two. Uh, what's the average age of the first year students? Um, there are first year students from 17 years old, I think. And also from 32. <laughs> oh, so well, yeah. <laughs> everything in between, but mostly it's 18, 19, I think. That's the, the most. Yeah. So there's no limit to how old you can be, have to no. be or have to be or? Of course. Yeah, and maybe the singers is again a good example. Uh, for Sometimes for singers, it's better to start a bit later. Sometimes for some singers, a bit early, it depends a bit. It, if you are 75, then it becomes a bit difficult. When you are over 30, uh, as a pianist, we also think it's it's a bit too late. But yeah, we have, just have to see. So there is, uh, uh, normally we have indeed students 18 years old graduating from high school and then come to our school. Um, and some of them already did another trajectory in another country and then come to us. That's also possible. We have to see whether you can develop still uh, uh, fast enough. And so it has to do with certain muscles. It is a physical training, training, of course. So it's, um, yeah, we have to see. But for some instruments, it's really no problem that you are 25. I mean, that's, that's uh, and for some instruments, instruments it's, it's a bit more problematic. Uh, and what, what do you do with the students so you see uh, potential in them, but they are just not good enough yet? Yeah, we have a lot of different options then. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a pre-course, as it is called, a voortraject. Uh, so you can go to a pre-course that's on Saturdays. And then you have also ensemble, instrument lessons, theory, uh, choir. So we have a lot of things to do there. Um, if you are even younger, then we have a Young Musicians Academy from already 12 years old, you can just study the, the Young Musicians Academy. Um, but there is also a possibility for non-EU students to do a pre-bachelor. So you can really do a pre-bachelor course when your instrument is still on uh, on, on pre-level. Yeah. Then you can do the pre-bachelor and do the theory already in year one. So you can combine like year one courses. So you have a full day of so full curriculum, but you do the main uh, instrument lessons on, uh, on the pre-level. And then the next year you do an audition and you are already a bit ahead. So that's, that's yeah. never bad huh? that you already did some courses in the first year and you passed some of them so you can uh, so there's still hope if you get rejected <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> okay um, i have a question because we asked the students about the preparation for the audition but okay can, can you give us a of us the the potential students a tip of our uh, uh, advice advice for their preparation how do can they yeah they can yeah. study the piece but can they do something extra well if you are going to an audition, you go to a performance. So indeed, dress up a bit. You don't have to wear the the, the, the concert costume, but also don't come in your in your normal uh, average. Jogging, uh, uh, so <laughs> act like that it is a performance. Show professionality in that. Um, present yourself to the jury. Just talk about who you are and tell something about the piece you are going to play. So really be communicative. Um, and then, of course, try to relax. So before you step in the room, breathe seven times and hold your breath sometimes and just try to relax and then go in. And so be uh, mental aware. That's really important. And if you start playing and you make a mistake, don't worry. Continue playing. Don't stop. Just continue playing. Focus again because the, the, the jury is also trying to see how you deal with failure. Because yeah. that's something you have to deal with the whole life as a musician. You are going to make mistakes always. That's no problem. But it's more about how do you overcome your own mistakes during your playing. And that's, yeah, for sure, if you already can do that a bit and show some resilience, <laughs> difficult words, uh, but show some, some flexibility in that, that's already uh, for sure uh, very good. So, uh, so making a mistake is not so so terribly wrong or something. It's beautiful advice. Um. <laughs> I really agree with Martijn um, because you think before an audition, the only thing that could go wrong is that you're physically not good enough. But actually what you're going to play, you know the piece, you know what you're going to play. And if you make a mistake, it's mostly because you're afraid to make a mistake. Uh, so for preparation, really be calm in your head because that's the worst thing what could happen actually, because if you make a mistake and you think, oh God, that was a mistake, then you make more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you know what you're going to play, you know the piece, so relax about that. And I think that's more important than, oh no, I don't know it, because you do know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good advice. Maybe some practical information about the auditions. 
Um, oh yeah. Uh -huh. Is it on the slide or uh, some data? For, uh, no, audition? for the auditions, I think we uh, we already have now. Uh, so if you would have questions for the auditions, please uh, contact us. Uh, so it's on the website. We have a lot of information about uh, what to do and how to prepare and what kind of pieces you have to play. Uh, but also if you have questions about the program or the course, you can always contact us. There is uh, a whole contact details on the screen now. You can call, you can email. Don't hesitate. We uh, are always uh, uh, willing to help you. And if you contact us, we can also directly connect you to your potential teacher. Uh, for instance, um, sometimes we have some new teachers. We have now a, a very uh, uh, a good new double bass teacher, uh, Ardashes Agosian, the Turkish teacher. Really good guy. So if you are interested in studying with him, we can already connect you. So it's uh, it's it's, yeah. it's it's interesting to to um, to contact us that we know that you're interested, and we can already give you like a, an online um, an online lesson just to get get to know each other. So uh, feel free. With all your questions, and we can connect you. So that's uh, basically uh, what we what we strive for. And any deadlines for the application, or well, um, before the summer, if we have uh, uh, already all the spots uh, given, then it closes. And sometimes we open up for some other instruments which we have still some availabilities, and then we go on in uh, in August. Uh, yeah. okay. But normally before the summer, it stops. Uh, there will also be some more info in the chat about the additions. Yes, uh, there's a question yeah. for I, I guess for Maria <laughs> and then we go. Uh, I think yes, <laughs> we go on. Uh, how is the atmosphere in Tilburg for foreign students? Um, it's a really small uh, city and it's really cozy and uh, students um, mostly get on uh, international houses um, to stay. And here at school, uh, most of us are internationals, <laughs> the majority, so um, there's actually no problem. I mean, what you hear outside in the corridors is English, mostly. Uh, then uh, we are lots of Portuguese and Spanish, so we also have our own mafia, let's say. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> our own gang. Um, but uh, I feel really comfortable here. Um, and not, I mean, I actually know the language, but if you don't know that, she's not a problem because uh, school offers all the facilities for you to uh, understand. And also now there are a Dutch course, if I'm not mistaken, in the International Center. Um, so opportunity is given for you to really come here and not only learn what, uh, for your main course, Main course, but also learn from the language and uh, also, how do you say? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, get into the culture a bit. Yes, but it's it's really nice for foreign students. Do you have the same experience as a non-foreign student? <laughs> do you think it's a good atmosphere? Uh, yes, I really talk a lot with international people from school. Uh, they're just the same. Yeah, well, they are the same, but it's easy to contact them as a as a Dutch student, so I think they're really free here to be who they yeah. are. And, and it is a nice city here in Tilburg. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's also the city is also a nice city and a school. Um, Marta, maybe it's nice. Do you have any vi video videos, um, clips, movie clips? <laughs> um, we have, we movie. have one uh, interesting clip maybe about our uh, our EMPA course. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's a good video to show a bit what we do. So um, yeah, maybe. Uh, um, we can get that on uh, on screen and see what uh, what we all offer our students in in one minute. So. Yeah, maybe we can uh, watch it. Hi, my name is Martin Smits, the managing director of the Academy of Music and Performing Arts in Tilburg. AMPA is an ambitious, innovative bachelor conservatory program that emphasizes high quality performance, chamber music, and creativity. The Academy brings students to a high level of excellence while connecting music with other art forms, such as dance, theater, and fine arts. Our core program components are artistic excellence, an international environment, entrepreneurial skills, and intensive work with ensembles and residents. We educate students to become leaders in their fields and play important roles in the development of new visions on the music profession. Yes, it's a really nice clip about the atmosphere here at the school. Um, As you can see, it's 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 really about um, challenging students to to go further than only playing music. 
challenging students about their own profession, about looking at the field, what's go what's happening nowadays, connecting to that, innovating that field. And I think that's, yeah, that's one of our main, uh, uh, yeah, unique selling points that we can really offer that here because we have this personal approach for students and then can really develop it themselves. So I think that's that's great. So also, it's important that students can innovate the new, the working field and the. Definitely, yeah, and it's challenging. It's it's kind of complex, of course, and it's not always uh, uh, very easy. It's it's uh, uh, the other way around. It's very difficult, but if you don't offer students that attitude or at least that mindset, then I think you are doing something wrong. If you only connect to something which exists, I think you also need to inspire them to to think further. And yeah. that's yeah, that's that's really important for. Yeah, it's really interesting and and, and important. And Maria and Glenn, is there also do you have to work with other programs like theater or dance or is there a possibility to work in interdisciplinary? <laughs> yes, there is. Um, yeah, basically you can uh, fix it yourself for, uh, for instance, in my uh, last year you have the 10 credits, I think, and you can do literally with any department that uh, exists here at school. Um, and normally what uh, we do also is the project weeks we have. Um, I had once a uh, sort of a um, live stream program we had with all students from fourth years and we just had to make groups and basically it was like a TV show and uh, every group had to prepare um, a, a program <laughs> for the TV show and uh, we it was interesting to work with that because um, we all we all uh, learn from each other and uh, we can use uh, each other's skills to make something really interesting and uh, that's really enriching in this school. Really like that. And for you, Lynn? I had one interdisciplinarity project. Uh, it was online, um, but it was really interesting because we were in a, a group of six people on Microsoft Teams <laughs> and just sharing some ideas. <laughs> Um, but it's really interesting because they really think different about subjects uh, than a musician does. So it's nice to talk with each other and I really like it. Yeah. yeah. And can you describe a little bit about the general atmosphere here at school? What, uh, yeah, if you walk into the building, what do you see? What do you feel, smell, <laughs> maybe? Well, it's just um, getting home again, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, because uh, there is no competition feeling, at least for me, um, because what we do in my class, we help each other. We go to each other's rooms and we study together. We ask opinions. We ask, uh, how do you, would you study this? How would you do that? And I think that's really enriching for all perspectives of studying. And uh, I think no one is afraid of like going to the, a room and study like what, uh, what is everyone else going to think of me? And I think that's one of the most important things uh, while studying to feel comfortable. And for you, Glenn, what do you think of the yeah. the atmosphere here? As Maria already said, you really feel like coming home. You can just practice your thing. You can talk with each other, hang out, drink a coffee. Uh, it's just chill and relax and help each other. She said, yeah. Sounds nice. Yes. <laughs> it's the same for us as teachers and management. <laughs> for you, it's not so nice. You have to see the little bit. So, do you, sorry, <laughs> do you want to add something? Uh, no, I think this yeah. is basically the, 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 uh, a really, really, really good selling point for our institute, for actually all the, the, the courses we offer here. So not only for our conservatory program, but also for the dance academy, also all the other disciplines. We have a really, really nice atmosphere here. People help each other out. The, the management is very close to the students. The teachers are close to the students, but professional enough to help them out. And and so it's it's yeah it's in in that case you really feel welcome and you feel that the, there is a whole team working on your skills and your talents and your inspiration. And that yeah that's it's, it's, uh, I already experienced that when I was studying here already a long time ago. <laughs> and I, I've also studied in a lot of other institutes, but like the atmosphere you have here, it's it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of unique. It's really interesting. Yeah, it seems a nice uh, closing point to this uh, conversation. Um, so the yeah, more information or the contact is on the website and it's also maybe in the in the chat. Yes. So then I want to thank uh, Maria, Glenn, and Martijn for the conversation. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, and then uh, we want to wish you a lot of luck with the auditions. And uh, maybe we see you here 
at the Fontis. Maybe. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Welkom bij Fontes Hogeschool voor de Kunsten. Welkom in Tilburg. Yes. Ik ben Rebecca. En ik ben Florian. En wij gaan jullie meenemen op tour. Ja, door de gebouwen van de FHK. Let's go. Naast muziek, theater, beeldend is er natuurlijk hier op de FHK ook een dance academy. En dat gebeurt vooral hier in de dansstudio's. En hier is ook een les bezig. En volgens mij staat Rebecca beneden om even een kijkje te nemen. En uh, als je de sfeer hier zou moeten omschrijven, hoe zou je dat dan doen? Ja, heel veel diversiteit en dat zorgt wel voor gewoon een, of in ieder geval bij ons een energieke sfeer. Dat is wel heel tof. Je hebt mensen van alle landen en natuurlijk praat je ook Engels, terwijl Nederlands je moedertaal is, dat is wat je gewend bent. Het is niet per se echt zo een echt hier docent en hier leerling. Het is wel van, ze staan er wel voor je, ze staan voor je klaar, dus dat is wel echt super chill. Hier op de FHK zitten wel 15 opleidingen onder één dak. En dat is hier in deze gang eigenlijk perfect merkbaar. Flashback. En achter deze deur zit de master architectuur en stedenbouw. En volgens mij kunnen we even naar binnen, maar we moeten wel heel stil zijn, want ze zijn heel serieus bezig. Alle masteropleidingen werken hier op de FHK met elkaar samen tijdens onder andere de onderzoeksdag. Ja, en je hebt bijvoorbeeld de Master of Music, uh, Performing Public Space, Kunsteducatie en Choreografie. We zijn hier in het Academietheater en we gaan even kijken naar een flashback. Hier op de FHK zijn maar liefst zes werkplaatsen. Een werkplaats voor textiel. Digitaal. Hout. Grafiek. Metaal. En keramiek. We lopen nu door de gang, door de kelder van Rock Academie. Waarom ben jij naar de FHK gekomen? Ja, vooral de vibe, de sfeer, het past meer bij mij, of het past het meest bij mij. Dus, ja. Ik kom alleen maar creatieve dingen tegen, mensen willen dingen delen, mensen willen dingen zien. Dus ja, het is gewoon één grote creatieve sfeer en dat is super chill. Eigenlijk... Leuk, en wat ben jij aan het doen? Ik was momenteel een beetje aan het schrijven en ik heb het eigenlijk net afgerond, dus ik was eigenlijk aan het oefenen. Ja, daar kan luxe zaken voor een young boy. Blijf bijvoorbeeld weken in de convoy. Wil je focussen op het feit dat ik me ontplooi? Vandaar dat ik mijn zonnes in het rond strooi. Hoi! Hoi! We zijn hier in de digitale werkplaats. Volgens mij is het tijd voor een flashback. En in dit lokaal zijn de mensen van de Academie voor Muziek en Musical Theater bezig. Maar. Um... Mogen we gewoon naar binnen? Ik denk het wel. Kom. Hij zit een beetje met een 40 euro aan mij, toch? Dat is het. Dat is echt niet waar. Ik wil van haar de context weten. Zo, Rebecca, waar moeten we nu naartoe? Uh, nou, we hebben hier bijna alles gehad. Dus okay. ik denk uh, naar de circushal. Die hebben we nog niet gezien. De Academy of Circus and Performance Arts. Oké, okay, yes. dat moet op de fiets, toch? Uh, ja, laten we de fiets in. Ja, oké. Okay. Als er nu één opleiding internationaal is op de FHK, dan is het wel deze opleiding. We zijn namelijk bij de Academy for Circus and Performance Arts. Was het weer. En wil jij nou ook op Fontes komen studeren of wil je meer informatie? Ga dan naar fontes.nl slash kunsten. Of volg de FHK op Twitter, Instagram of Facebook. Yes, en dan uh, hopelijk zien we jullie volgend jaar op de FHK. Tot ziens!